Merging a group of cells is very simple in Excel. We just make use of the Merchant Center under the Home tab and the Alignment ribbon. So as an example here, um, under the Region column here, there are three different values, one for Central, and one for East, and one for West. If I want to combine all this one into one row, I highlight rows here, and click on Merchant Center. To middle align this one, just click on this one over here, the middle align, and then you now it's the center of those five different rows. And if we do the same thing with the east and also the west, and center that one. If I want to put a title over here, total cost by region. I can make that the center of this whole table here also by clicking on highlighting all these columns and then click on Merge and Center. And there you go. And then you can color this one and also highlight the text with white color. And there you go. <laughs> Grid lines are the lines that run vertically or horizontally across your whole entire worksheet. And sometimes when you're working on a particular table, um, you prefer to have the, the grid lines removed. So the options to remove the grid lines is by going to View and click on the grid lines here. And then everything, all the lines that you're seeing here across and vertically are actually gone. The other way to do it fast is um, by knowing the, the shortcut keys alt wvg which is actually this one over here so if you click on alt wvg and you memorize that one it automatically removes the grid lines and the same thing if you want to put it back it's alt wvg Sometimes you would want to do a cumulative total of all the rows in your data. So in this case, you're adding the first row to the second row, and then the summation of these two rows to the third row, and then the summation of these three rows to the fourth row, and so on and so forth, up to the end of this uh, table here. So one way to do it is to do, if you click on this one here. What I am interested about is actually these totals here. So if you click on this one here, there's so many options below. So if I click on this one, the total of the summation of um, all your rows from H3 to H21 would give you about 7,509. So if I do average, this is the average, the count. So there are about 19 uh, rows in your table and then and so on and so forth. So but what I'm interested about is actually the cumulative total. So if I move to the uh, right and choose this one. The data that I'm getting here is actually just the individual uh, value for each of the row. So if I click on the arrow here, you would see total here, so which is in terms of percentage. And then this is the running total here, which is the cumulative. So if I click on this one, that would give me what I actually need. So, um, if I want to view the formula, which is actually by looking at this one here, I do have the formula on how it's being calculated, actually. So that's it. Sometimes you want to find out if there are some calculations being performed within your Excel worksheet. And one way to do that is actually to verify the columns in your table. Like in this case, the total column is referencing to both units column and also the unit cost. Whereas the, the cumulative total column is referencing the, the total column by doing a running total of each of the rows up to the end of the, the table here. Um, one way to do it is actually by clicking on control tilde. And there you go. You will see that the total column 
has a formula and also the cumulative total has a calculation in it. The order date has changed quite a bit because the one that's being shown, this is the numeric value of your date field. But if you go back to the original, this is the formatted value, which is 0106.16 is actually an mm slash dd slash nyy. And that's how to do it. Sometimes you're working with a two-dimensional data where um, you're asked to find the value within your data for combinations of segments. So in here, this is actually my table here. And I was asked to find where the size is actually medium and the name is John. So the value that I'm actually looking for is the medium and the name of John. The value should be 87. So with a VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP functions, they're not going to work with this kind of problem. So how to solve this problem is by using the index function and also the match functions to determine the values of selected segments. So in this case, how I would do it is equal sign and then index. First, select the array of data that you want to uh, find the value for. Um, and then comma, and then type match. And if you want to match medium first with all the rows, Click on medium and then comma and then highlight the, the sizes and then comma and then zero for the exact match and then type match again and do the same thing for the columns. So here John is one of the columns and then comma and then highlight this one and then comma again and then zero for the exact match and there you go. So if you want to find uh, Allen and then low, type low, then type Allen. And that should give you 95. And that's how you should do it. format a table is simply by using the number ribbon um, in your home tab. So in this case, the unit cost, I want this one to have only two decimal places. So if I highlight this one here, and then if you click on this one here, it would make the adjustment. And if I want this one also the same thing, probably in, you know, a whole number here, um, but I want to put a dollar sign, just highlight both of them and click on a dollar sign. And that's if, if it is in US dollars. However, there are some situations where you have to convert it to other currencies. So in this example here, I would like to convert it to a Philippine peso where the exchange rate is actually $50. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a formula, multiply this one by this one here and making sure that I'm actually fixing the cell where the $50 is actually situated so that when I move down this ones and then copy that one it will be referencing to K2 rather than moving down another level when as I copy down the formula so the problem here is that this is still in US dollars and I want to convert it to a Philippine peso. It's already converted to a Philippine peso, but this one here, it's still showing dollar sign. So one way to do that one is if we highlight this one here and the use of control one, it will bring you to the format cells. So in here, there's so many categories. It's similar to what the number ribbon has, but it has more than what you're getting in here. So if here, I, if I want to convert this one to a Philippine peso, I will just go to currency, for example. And in here, you will see a symbol sign. And then if you drop this one down, or if I type P and then I move down, there is a Philippine peso here. Click on OK, and that um, has already converted it to a Philippine peso. That's how to use the, the Control plus one shortcut key in Excel to go to the uh, format cells feature in Excel.
To create the pivot table, there are two ways how to do it. First is uh, you need to highlight your table. And then under the insert tab, you will see the pivot table uh, ribbon here. So if you click on that one, it will bring you to this table here and you just need to click OK. And then you can actually start creating your own table here. Like for example, if I want order date here and the total, that's what the pivot table is going to show. However, there's another trick that I want to show to you. If you go back to the original source here, so your table is now highlighted. So instead of going to insert tab and going to this pivot table ribbon here, at the bottom of your data, so like for example here, highlight your table here, and then you will see the quick analysis icon here appearing again. So if you click on this one here and click on the tables, and it will give you different options of pivot tables. So you, you have this one, if you point to this one, and above it, you will see the the format that I mean the table how it's gonna look like when it creates the the pivot table, or if you don't want by by region, you can do by the different item, or you can actually do by the unit cost and by region. So if you click on let's say by binder, it will automatically create your pivot table here. So if, if that's what you want to show, however, I will drag this one out if I want this one the uh, the order date and then by the different representatives if you want to remove anything that's less than 2016 just click on this one and un un uncheck this one and also this one for anything about December 22 2017 and that's how your data is gonna appear there you go